Hi everybody, as you can see I'm here at Yukon Cemetery. It's about five or ten miles west of downtown Oklahoma City. So I'm here to visit the final resting place of singer Garth Brooks. He already has his spot picked out, he already has his um, headstone picked out, it just doesn't have the, the date of death. Thanks for joining me on another trip to visit the most memorable cemeteries, memorials, and grave sites. So how many of you are like Garth Brooks and have already chosen your future final resting place? If you feel like sharing it with us, let us know in the comment section below where it's located. I purchased mine a couple of years ago, and I'll show it to you at the end of this video. So I'm going to go across the street and I'm going to head, I'm going to drive back to the back of the cemetery and show you where Garth Brooks's future final resting place is located. The cemetery is in Yukon, Oklahoma, and it's located on the corner of Yukon Avenue and Garth Brooks Boulevard. And to be honest, I wouldn't know about this if I hadn't have watched uh, the YouTube channel Ready for Fun. Reddy came here, he, he lives here in Oklahoma, and he visits a lot of cemeteries and, and places similar to mine, you know, lots of trips down memory lane, things from the past, a lot of history. Great channel, if you haven't seen it already, I'll put the uh, link uh, down below here so you can uh, check out his channel. And so let's go inside, and I'm going to drive to the very back of the cemetery, which is a lot larger than I thought it would be. I thought it was a much smaller cemetery. It's supposed to be close to 90 today, and it doesn't really look that overcast, but it feels very, very humid. Pretty much the way it's felt very humid most of my trip. But at least today the skies are blue, so I'm not complaining. At least not much. I guess I'll roll up the window and just turn on my AC here. Now I wanted to go all the way back, but there's someone parked right in the road, and they don't seem to you leave it anytime soon, so let me go this way. Okay, I think this is a street. It's very narrow, narrower than the other streets. A lot of really interesting headstones here. I wish I had more time today. But I've been on the road for weeks now, and it's time for me to head home and I'll just have to make another trip for all the places I realized I thought I was gonna be able to see so many places on this trip and I did but I thought I'd be able to see two or three times as many destinations as I was able to it's surprising how long it takes to visit not just cemeteries but uh, other locations and destinations sightseeing destinations everything takes so much longer than you think it's going to so I'm going to make a right-hand turn here at the very last street at the back of the cemetery. And then on the left-hand side is Garth Brooks's family plot. It's right there where you see the bushes and the trees. And you might be able to make out the headstone with the two hearts. I believe that's his parents' headstone right in the center. And Garth and other family members are in a circle around the parents. Now I'm sure this won't come as a surprise to anyone who watches this channel to know that my favorite Garth Brooks song is If Tomorrow Never Comes. It's such a beautiful song and one of my all-time favorite country songs. How about you? Do you have a favorite Garth Brooks song? And here are the graves and future grave sites of other family members in a circle around the parents. And it looks like there's plenty of room for other family members in the future as well. So as you can see, this is all the way back to the very back of the cemetery. Here are his parents. James Perry Smittle II. Okay, so he's still alive. Kelly Shane Brooks is still alive. Troy L. 
Garth Brooks is still alive. And there's also, looks like there might be space here for others. so broad I can really hardly read that. I don't know if that says Jerome Paul Smittle. And Harriet Elizabeth Betsy Smittle. She's still alive. Michael Sean Brooks is still alive. It's a really nice uh, family plot they have here. And it's a beautiful day here. So I'll drive around and uh, show you a little bit uh, more of the cemetery. But for all of you Garth Brooks fans, and I'm a big fan, I thought you'd like to see his uh, future final resting place in this really beautiful cemetery, which is much larger than I thought it would be. This is a pretty cemetery. And how cool is it that Garth Brooks and his family will all be buried on Garth Brooks Boulevard. And over here on the left-hand side, I think this is about the fourth teddy bear headstone that I've seen as I've been driving around the cemetery. The children's grave sites are always especially sad to see, but these headstones are so cute, they must help bring back happy memories for the families. Here are a few others that I spotted in the cemetery. Now I happen to see one gravestone right here inside of the gate under this beautiful tree. Oh wow. Okay, I just, I'm glad I just happened to see this. So on my way back to St. Louis for my family reunion, I did stop at the Alfred P. Murrah building in downtown Oklahoma City. This is really nice to see in memory of the Alfred P. Murrah building bombing, April 19th, 1995. Yukon Cemetery Association. And it's right here all by itself. Although maybe it does look like there are gravestones over there. But this is as soon as you come into the gates, just on the right hand side. And then it looks like over on this side is a Veterans Memorial. And this is just off the freeway. It's, gosh, it doesn't seem like it was even a mile. I never really thought about where the victims of the 1995 bombing were buried, but I'm guessing that some, if not many, of them are buried right here at Yukon Cemetery. I wish I had more time today to visit some of their grave sites, but I did visit their memorial downtown, and I'll show that to you in a separate video. I spent the night in Oklahoma City at a Red Roof Inn. It's the first time I've stayed at the Red Roof Inn, and it was very nice. So for those of you who are like me and like to travel, here's a look at my room and what you get for under $50 a night during a weekday. I forget the exact amount, I think it was $45 or so. So about the same price as the Motel 6, but it has a lot more amenities, like this refrigerator here, this little small refrigerator. None of the Motel 6s that I've been in have had that. None have had a microwave, and even here, None of the Motel 6s have Kleenex dispensers or Kleenex. And none of them had coffee maker, hair dryer, complimentary coffee, that sort of thing. A standard bathroom. Now this was a king size bed, super comfortable. I would say the only negative to last night were the neighbors. Uh, wh whoever was upstairs was having a dance party all night, I think. And uh, when they finally went to bed, 
I got a really good night's sleep, or at least it was easy to fall asleep. The bed was so comfortable, and even though this is also right next to the freeway, I'll show you. It was very quiet, I guess because of the fan, you know, the white noise blocks it out. So you can see the freeway there in the distance. And right next door is Denny's, and that's my car right there. You know, I like to park. I was able to get a, a ground floor unit once again and, you know, park pretty close to my room to make it easy to bring in and out the luggage. So all in all, overall, I was very happy with this room. And I just wanted to show you the room, see what you get for... $45 or so a night on a weeknight. This was a, a Thursday night. It's probably a little bit more on the weekends. Have any of you stayed here at this Red Roof Inn just off of Highway 40 in Oklahoma City or in another location in the country? What was your experience? Feel free to share down below in the comment section. This morning I'm here at Desert Memorial Park on a very sunny morning as the sun is coming up and I'm standing in front of the niche that I purchased. Actually, uh, Jim and I purchased niches here a couple of years ago. Right here. Frank Sinatra is buried right there. My grandparents are buried just a few rows beyond him. Right by my car there, the white car you see. And I'm going to look for a little shade right now. And many of you over the past year or so have asked me where I want to be buried. So I thought I would show you. When my uh, younger brother Billy died a couple of years ago, at the age of 55, I decided that it was probably time to make final arrangements. I'd already decided I wanted to be cremated long ago, and I just wanted to be scattered here in Palm Springs, where I live. This is where I've always wanted to be buried. I didn't realize I wanted to be cremated until I got a little bit older. Then I talked to a number of people who said, you know, you're the graveyard guy. You're, you love graveyards, you love cemeteries, it's your thing. And why are you not going to be, you know, interred in a cemetery so I really got to think about it. I thought well it does make sense to actually have a final resting place. For me I like visiting final resting places so it'd be kind of uh, ironic if I didn't have one if I just had my ashes scattered which always kind of upsets me when I visit famous people who have their ashes scattered and they have no you know memorial or cenotaph or final resting place to visit so I thought well I don't want to be like them. When I purchased my cremation niche here in this wall, I had the option of putting my name on it with my birth year, leaving my death date open. But unlike Garth Brooks, I decided to just go ahead and leave the niche blank until the time comes. There are a couple of other niches here with names and death dates left open. So a few other people have done what Garth Brooks has done. But for now, anyway, I decided to go ahead and to leave my name off. So how about you? Have you already chosen your ground plot or, or your cremation niche? And have you had it engraved like Garth Brooks? Or are you waiting until the time comes as well? Now, I don't know if you could see the beautiful mountains on the other side of this wall. You know, I know it's kind of funny to talk about views after you're dead, but it is kind of nice to have a, a niche with a view. So not only are the beautiful mountains behind, but from my niche, I overlook uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, actually, just right here, just a couple of uh, feet away from my niche is the is the gravesite of actor William Powell. And then just a few rows on is, I'll turn around, I don't know if you'll be able to see here. So William Powell is right, William Powell's grave is right here. My niche is right here. Frank Sinatra is right there where the flowers, if you can see the flowers there. That's uh, Frank and Barbara Sinatra. And this whole section here is just full of famous athletes and writers and songwriters, actors, actresses, politicians. But that's not the reason I wanted to be interred here. The reason I chose this spot is not only because I just love the desert, I love Palm, the Palm Springs, the greater Palm Springs area, and I love the desert, but my grandparents are buried here, and that's who I wanted to be buried next to. So if you see Frank Sinatra's flowers, you just go back to where my car is, about five or six rows past Frank Sinatra's flowers, and that's where my grandparents are buried. And I've been coming here to the cemetery since they were buried back in the 1970s. I've explored, I've searched, I've photographed, I've taken videos, done vlogs. But yet every single time I come, I find somebody new or something that I haven't seen before. Now, the other thing I really love to do at this cemetery, I figure while I'm still alive and I love to walk, I usually walk a couple of miles every day. So quite often I just come here, 
it's not that far from where I live. It's just uh, 10 minutes away. And so I come here to walk. Since I walk every day anyway, it's kind of, there's something kind of neat about walking in a cemetery where you plan to spend eternity. In a way, it's kind of like getting to know your neighbors, getting to know the history of the cemetery, getting to know all the uh, uh, other residents that are already here, and, and then kind of wondering, you know, who will be here years after I'm gone? Will there be other really interesting, famous, fascinating people that are buried here years after me? I mean, that's pretty cool to think about too. I don't know, I guess, you know, if you're me, if you like to think about uh, this sort of thing, which I do, <laughs> I find it uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. If you enjoyed this video, you might like one of the other videos shown here. And if you'd like to be notified when I upload future videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon. Until next time, thanks for sharing the memories, everyone.